Hi guys, in this video, we're gonna be talking about the nine steps to my perfect morning routine, which I've been practicing every day for the last three years. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Matt and I'm a high performance coach based in the UK. And on this channel, we explore the strategies and tools that you can implement on a daily basis and achieve better than expected results on a consistent basis. About five years ago, I never really had a morning routine because all I would do was hit the snooze button on my alarm as soon as it went off, hit it three or four times, and then obviously start in a cycle of lateness, rushing to um, get started to go to work or to um, run my business. And really it set me up for stress for the rest of the day because I always felt that I was lagging behind in terms of what I needed to get done for the day. So I put some focus and attention to devising a morning routine that would give me the perfect start to the day and make sure that I have the best chance of being the most productive throughout the day because of the start that I've had in my morning. That being said, let's go through the nine steps that I currently use in my morning routine, which make sure that I start my day in the best possible way. Step one, the alarm goes off, don't hit the snooze button, count to five, get out of bed. Now, the reason I count to five is because within that period of time, there's often the temptation to fall back to sleep, but I'm already starting to engage my brain so that I don't fall into autopilot whereby I then start hitting the snooze button, rolling over and going back to sleep. So by consciously making an effort to count to five seconds and then getting up as soon as my count hits five, that gets me out of bed, make sure that I then have a domino effect that starts the rest of my morning routine. And the first thing I do as soon as I get out of bed is put on my Apple Watch. Now, the reason I put on my watch is because I wanna track my active calories. I wanna track how much exercise I'm getting throughout the day. And I wanna make sure that I'm standing up on the hour every hour for at least 12 hours throughout the day to ensure that there's good blood circulation throughout my body. And the reason I start by putting on my Apple Watch before I do anything else after waking up and getting out of bed is because that is an anchor for me and it's a trigger for me to start the rest of my morning routine. I already know that I have a set routine in place. So as soon as I put on my Apple Watch, that then sets off the domino effect for me to go through the rest of the nine steps that make up my routine. Step two, once I've put my watch on, I head downstairs and I drink a couple of glasses of water to make sure that the body's fired up and ready to take on some exercise. I've learned over time that because we tend to expel quite a bit of moisture when we're sleeping. So if you think about it, you're sleeping six, seven, eight hours a night and you're breathing out moisture through your breath and you're also sweating. And generally when we go throughout the day, we won't go six, seven hours without taking in some sort of drink, some sort of liquid, liquid, ideally water. So really, even though you keep your body hydrated throughout the day, don't have that luxury during the night because you're asleep. So the first thing that I do is drink a couple of glasses of water to rehydrate my body and make sure that it is ready to take on the rest of my morning routine and also and to make sure that you don't start the day dehydrated. After I drank in a couple of glasses of water, step number three is practicing uh, the Wim Hof breathing method. Now I was introduced to this method um, in 2018 when I was on Tony Robbins' Unleash the Power Within course. Um, Wim Hof was there on the last day and he went through his uh, breathing method and also um, the benefits of taking cold showers and cold exposure and that sort of thing, which at that stage, I've been practicing cold showers for about three years in any case, um, but I hadn't practiced any sort of breathing method. And I wanted to implement this as part of the morning routine because it really encourages me to take slow, deep breaths first thing in the morning, which is beneficial because it triggers your brain into thinking that you're calm and serene and relaxed, whereas taking short, sharp, shallow breaths as soon as you start your day and triggers a stress response and um, because short start, sharp breaths are normally associated with stress or panic or um, exertion and that's not really how I wanted to start my day. Um, I also found that by going through the Wim Hof breathing method my lung capacity has increased in terms of the amount of air that I'm able to take into my lungs and I've extended the uh, length of time that I'm able to hold my breath as well which is has no other benefit really first thing in the morning other than seeing how long I can hold my breath for. At the moment, I've got to three minutes 45. I'm trying to bring the, break the four minute barrier, but it does help uh, if you wanna go um, swimming, you wanna uh, go diving, that sort of thing. Um, it helps with uh, breath retention. But I found the Wim Hof method really beneficial because it just slows me down at the start of the day. 
um, even though I've only just woken up, you know, to have a gentle introduction to the day is a benefit to me rather than starting the day in a panic or, you know, at pace because really I need time to wake up and acclimatize to the morning. And the Wim Hof Method for me is a perfect way to practice some breathing, get some deep di diaphragmatic breaths uh, into my body and then set me up to go into step four, which is... Uh, some mobility exercises. So the reason I do um, some mobility stretching, mobility exercises for about 10 minutes first thing in the morning is because I have historically had quite a bad back and about six months ago I managed to jar my back uh, and I was out of action for a couple of weeks and that really made me pay more attention to moving my body in the right way first thing in the morning rather than jumping straight into exercise. When I jarred my back about six months ago I said to myself I don't really want to go through the process of having to go to a chiropractor every time to get my back adjusted and all that kind of stuff. So I went onto YouTube um, and I found uh, some back exercises to do. So I curated a morning mo mobility routine for myself, which gets my back nice and supple and also, you know, is quite a nice stretching uh, routine in any case. So it involves some yoga elements, some mobility exercises to increase my range of motion, both in my back um, and my hamstrings, my glutes, my shoulders, you know, certain areas that get quite tight beat through working out or through the stress of the day. So I've really found that introducing the mobility routine first in the morning has massively helped with me being able to uh, look after my body. Step number five, once I've gone through my mobility routine, I will go into my fitness routine. I don't go to the gym. I only use sort of bodyweight exercises. I've got a couple of kettlebells, a mace belt, and a weighted vest. Oh, and a sandbag. And they form uh, sort of my staple equipment, which I use to work out. My workouts range from sort of 20 to maybe 55, 60 minutes in length. And I go through, you know, a warm up routine. Then I go through the core exercise, working on a strength and resistance first, and then some sort of endurance base, whether it's running with a very weighted vest or doing some HIIT exercises um, towards the end of the routine. And then I've started to incorporate um, some core and ab work as well uh, to make sure that I'm working all areas of the body every time I work out. I stopped going to the gym because I didn't really enjoy going to the gym. And since I made that decision seven or eight years ago, you know, I really enjoy waking up in the morning and getting out and exercising outside, whether it's sunny, whether it's cold, whether it's wet, I will always exercise outside. And it's just nice to get some fresh air, to get out in the open, uh, especially at the time that I um, work out, it's first thing in the morning, so it's quiet everywhere. And it's just nice to spend some time um, using it as a, a kind of meditative practice. Although recently I've started to listen to podcasts and audiobooks when I'm working out because I find that I tend to take in the information better. Working on two different things, I'm working on cognitive function and I'm working on sort of physical motion and uh, they both sort of complement each other I've found. So going through the exercises first thing in the morning is super beneficial. Exercise is a massive anchor for me. If I don't exercise in the morning, I lose motivation to exercise throughout the rest of the day because you know other things come up other responsibilities and priorities tend to go and play so i really do like to start my day off with uh, a good bout of exercise and i feel a little bit lost or that i've missed out if i don't go through my normal exercise routine which is very rare um, i'm currently working out five days a week then I have um, an active rest day and then I have a complete rest and recovery day where I'll do something like um, yoga or Pilates and um, do some more extended mobility exercises. I've got a Theragun which I'll use to help my muscles relax and to, um, uh, to loosen up a little bit more. The program that I've devised for myself at the moment I find is uh, really beneficial and has really helped with not only bulking up a little bit, gaining a bit of weight and muscle, um, but generally you know, finding enjoyment and challenging myself to uh, increase my performance. I'm looking to compete in uh, some Spartan races and Tough Mudders this year, um, as well as uh, completing the Murph uh, CrossFit Challenge in under 30 minutes, which is uh, quite a stretch for me. Um, so there are uh, some bigger goals that I'm aiming towards with my exercise but having that as an anchor at the start of the day is massively important. Step number six, um, I then practice a short one minute box breathing exercise 
which basically is taking five breaths in on a five count, holding my breath for five seconds, and then letting the air out on a five count as well, and going through that cycle five times. All that does for me is make sure that I am uh, completely relaxed, my body's completely relaxed, my breathing is brought back under control, and I'm ready to start my meditation practice, which is step seven. I tend to meditate anywhere between 10 and 20 minutes um, after exercise, and I picked up a practice called the six phase meditation from uh, Vishen Lakhiani at Mind Valley over uh, last summer, so in 2021. Um, before then, I was uh, doing quite a lot of mindfulness practice by using an app called Headspace, uh, which I've been using for uh, about eight years. And that in it, app in itself has been really helpful in starting a consistent meditation and mindfulness practice. And then stepping up to go through the six phase meditation, go through uh, a gratitude practice, you go through, through some visualization, um, and you go through an empathy practice. And there are six phases, obviously, to this meditation practice. And all in all, um, you know, it can take you anywhere between sort of 10, 15, 20 minutes. And I find it massively beneficial because it helps me, you know, reflect on uh, the past. It helps me stay in the present. And it also helps me visualize uh, the future and what I want to achieve. And that is uh, a perfect way for me to lead into step eight, which is my journaling practice. Now, I only started journaling throughout the pandemic. So started in April 2020. And the reason was I was listening and I do listen to the Daily Stoic podcast quite a lot. And Ryan Holiday kept espousing the benefits of journaling. Uh, so I decided to take up a journaling practice as a result of that. And it has been massively beneficial and transformational for me as part of my morning routine. I get time first thing in the morning because I'm up early to have um, some quiet time, some quiet reflection to think about where I am right now, think about the things that I want to achieve, think about the things that I want to be grateful for. So my journaling practice has evolved from having one journal to now having three journals, which consists of uh, the five minute journal. Um, essentially, that is a journal where you go through um, a three stage gratitude practice, you go through th three things that will make today exceptional, and you go through uh, you write down your um, affirmation for the day. At the end of the day, you also write down three reflections on the day and the biggest lesson that you've learned. Um, I found that is super useful. So I've been using the five minute journal for almost a year now. And it is really handy to reflect on, you know, going back over the journals that I've completed and seeing what, how my thought process has evolved, how my gratitude practice has evolved and how the things I've learned have evolved. In addition to the five minute journal, I'm currently using the Daily Stoic journal as well, which I use mainly in the evening. I did start using it in the morning at first because it's set out to give you a morning and an evening reflection, but I've only taken it up as an evening practice right now because it fits in better with the time that I have available. And I like to reflect on the question that I pose at the end of the day. Third journal I keep is a notebook where I implement the bullet journal method. So the bullet journal method for me is really my sidekick throughout the day. The purpose for me using the journal at the start of the day is I set out my day planner, so um, I time block my, my day in the journal, and I also write down what makes the day great, what I'm grateful for, one thing, um, the thing that I'm focusing on today, the thing that I'm letting go, and then I go into uh, the task list and the main task that I want to achieve for the day. and. Again, the bullet journal for me has evolved over time, but it's something that I found has been super beneficial because not just do I use it to reflect first thing in the morning, but I also use it to you know, make notes, write down thoughts, write down quotes, whatever it is throughout the course of the day, which I then review at the end of each week uh, and either transfer into a commonplace book or you know, decide whether or not I need to take further action on the notes, etc. that I've written down. A journaling practice has been massively beneficial for me. The last step in my nine step morning routine involves a period of learning. Now by learning, I use a broad brush approach. It can either be reading a book, listening to a podcast, an element of an online course, watching um, an informative YouTube video, anything like that where I learned something new. And I picked up this habit from reading The 5am Club by Robin Sharma, where he breaks down the extra hour in the morning into 20 minute chunks. So 20 minutes of exercise, 20 minutes of learning, and 20 minutes of uh, reflection. I have 
incorporated the method into it, although the application that I use is different. But I do like to learn something every day, something new every day, every day, focusing on a continuous improvement, continuous uh, development. Um, so that learning period, whether it's for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, however long I have left at the end of my morning routine, I like to spend learning. Those nine steps take about two hours to complete in total. So I generally tend to get up about 5, 5.30, and I'm ready and set to take on the day by about 7, 7.30, sometimes 8 o'clock. For me, by going through those nine steps, sets me up for uh, the day in the right way. And, and this is the perfect way for me to start my morning. If you like this video, you'll love this video here, which explains why I'm recording 47 videos in 47 days and what I'm looking to achieve as a result of that. If you want to see more videos about implementing high performance habits that help you become the best version of yourself and achieve better than expected results on a consistent basis, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you have any comments, thoughts or feedback on this video or any other content that you'd like to see, see on this channel, make sure you leave a comment in the box below. Thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.